Today we've got some fairly big updates on Season 2 of The Wheel of Time to talk about. We have yet another filming location, some leaked set photos and videos to discuss, another casting, and an award nomination for Wheel of Time. A major fan event is also happening this week that we're going to discuss. Plus, I'll announce last week's contest winner and announce a new giveaway for some cool stuff this week. All of that and more on this week's weekly Wheel of Time news. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red with spoilers through book three of the Wheel of Time, The Dragon Reborn. If you have not read up until that point in the story, you're going to be spoiled. But if you don't care, keep on watching. So we'll kick the Wheel of Time news off with a casting announcement. This comes courtesy of Watseries.com, and it's a great scoop by them over there. They are reporting that actress Leia Costa has joined the Wheel of Time for season two of the show. Now, what is unknown is exactly the role that she's going to be playing. It was announced that she'll be playing the part of Magdalena, but that's not a character from the books. Last year, the production frequently used fake names for casting and for the script read-throughs to keep some of the casting announcements and parts that they were casting secret. Uh, it's extremely likely that Magdalena is a code name for another role in the story. Let's talk a little bit about who Leia Costa is, and then we'll talk a little bit about who Magdalena might be. First, Leia Costa is a 37-year-old Spanish-born actress who is most known for her 2016 performance in the German movie Victoria. She won Best Actress at the Berlin Film Awards for that performance. She was the first non-German to ever win it. She was also the Best Actress for the Malaga Film Festival for her role for Lullaby. Now, Leia also holds a PhD in Communication and International Relations that she obtained before her acting career even started, before she even turned 26. So she's pretty accomplished. So in terms of who she could be playing, it's hard to say based on her look alone. Because if we take clues from the name Magdalena, that would point us more in a certain direction. Last year, the code names were typically close in some way to the actual name. Not always, however. The best that I can come up with that makes sense based on uh, this time in the story that they're adapting right now would either be Morghese Tricand or perhaps even Mogidian if they're moving up her entrance to the story. It would be easy to give her red gold hair in a wig. Uh, she's certainly beautiful to play Morghese. My thought on Mogidian though, is a little different because I have a thought that if they do bring her in, then Falma is going to sort of take the place of Tanchico in the story. That would be moving things ahead a lot, but some of the things that we've learned and some of the things we'll talk about here in a moment um, with the casting stuff kind of leads me to believe they might be doing that. So just a thought. I know they're going to have to cut some stuff and adapt some things, maybe moving and combining Falma and Tanchico and some of the events that happen in those places might make sense, but we'll see. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments of the video who you think Magdalena could be. Now, before moving on in the news, I want to quickly throw it over to myself for a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. Self, here you go. So I wanted to take a moment and tell you about this video's sponsor, Magic Spoon. Now, if you didn't already know this, I've been doing keto now for the entire year. I've lost a good amount of weight, and Magic Spoon has been a big part of that. Now, growing up for me, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid. I would eat it any time. It's the great snack. But when I got older, especially when I started doing keto, most cereals aren't going to work for that. It's basically just consuming straight up sugar. Lately, like I said, I've been doing keto. I've been cutting back. So I was looking for more options that are low carb, don't have a lot of sugar in them or any sugar, but also taste really good. Magic Spoon has been an incredible find for me. So get this, there are zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net carbs in each serving. Not to mention there's only 140 calories per serving. So if you're doing keto, or you're just trying to keep your carbs down a bit lower, or you just want a healthier alternative to normal cereals and you want something that tastes good, Magic Spoon is something that you are going to love. There are four flavors I love. I love the cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. I specifically love the fruity because it tastes just like Fruit Loops but without the garbage sugar. <laughs> you really can't tell the difference, it tastes amazing. So if you're looking for a keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb cereal, click the link in the description of this video and grab a variety pack from Magic Spoon. Try it today. Make sure to use the promo code NABLESS at checkout 
and you're going to get $5 off of your order. You can also just head to magicspoon.com forward slash Nablitz. They are so confident in the product that it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they're going to refund your money, no questions asked. So again, click the link below and use the code Nablitz and save $5 today. Thank you for checking it out. And now let's get back to the video. Thanks for that word, self. Let's get back to it. So last week I talked about the expansion of the filming in Morocco and all of the extra scenes that were being filmed there. One of those areas was Marrakesh, and one of the locations near that that we know filming will be taking place is Eswira. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. We know this due to Joe from Talk Around Riyadh getting the information, but it appears that filming is taking place in the port city, specifically at the Scala Medina, a set of fortifications that date back to the 1700s. As you can see in the picture, this definitely appears to be a fortification, and in my mind, makes me think of the Stone of Tear. We know that they are adapting parts of books two and three, so it's very possible that we see the Stone of Tear during the season. The question remains how they got there, especially considering we also know that there is action taking place at Foma, and that's being filmed in a different location, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. It's very possible that this could be another location, but it seems to me that the Stone of Tear is most likely. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments of the video. So we were just talking about what might be the Stone of Tear, or at least some of the areas that might be used for it. But how do we know that this isn't another set for Foma? Well, that is due to some leaked photos from the set. Now, I'm not going to be showing them, but it is pretty clear at this point that the shooting taking place at Oar Zazat is likely to be Falma. There have been set photos that show white cloaks, Shan Chan soldiers, what looks like the Altaran flag, and all of that says Falma. In fact, all of this strongly implies that we're going to get an adaptation of the ending of the Great Hunt, specifically the presence of the white cloaks implies that. So the real question is how do they incorporate the ending to the Great Hunt into the ending of the Dragon Reborn in the same season? Do they even do that? The fact that Tyr and the Stone and the Aiel look to be part of the plot this season make it appear as though that's actually going to happen, though. If you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments of the video about how they get from Falma to Tyr. How might that happen? Let me know what you think. So it was just announced this last week that Wheel of Time has been nominated for a Hugo Award for the episode The Flame of Tarvalin, which is episode six from season one. The nomination is for Best Dramatic Presentation in Short Form, which means television. Now, if you're unfamiliar, the Hugo Awards are a science fiction-focused set of media awards that have been around since 1953, and they carry a bit of prestige. The awards are voted on by members of the World Science Fiction Convention. Episode 6 is the episode that follows Moraine as she faces the consequences of her actions, as well as her private moments with Swan and healing Matt from exposure to the dagger. Now the episode ends with the group entering the ways, but with Matt being left behind. This was one of the better episodes from the first season, and it will be interesting to see if the Wheel of Time gets the win. Now it's up against For All Mankind, Arcane, The Expanse, Loki, and Star Trek Lower Decks. There is some tough competition there. I think Arcane and The Expanse would be tough to beat, but we will see. We will find out on September 4th when the awards take place. So I've been mentioning the Watt Song Parody Challenge over the last month, and it is finally here. So over the past month or two, fans have been submitting their song parodies. This began last year and was one of the highlights for the fan community last year. You seriously don't want to miss this. Basically, people are making spoof songs that are Wheel of Time based. We're all going to vote on them American Idol style. This week, we're actually going to have the first two semifinal rounds. First on Tuesday, April 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Dusty Wheel. Then the second semifinal is on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, also on the Dusty Wheel. And then the finale will be Saturday, April 16th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. These were amazing last year. I seriously can't wait for this year. The community is so talented, and this was a lot of fun to watch and participate in as a viewer. Make sure to tune in and check this out. You are going to absolutely love it. So last week's contest was to leave a comment on the video and let me know if you were planning on attending any of the Wheel of Time conventions that are happening this year. Jordan Con is coming up in literally like a week and a half, so... Yeah. The winner gets a free t-shirt from shopwheeloftime.com, which is my merch store. And the winner from last week's contest is Jeremy Perez. Jeremy, shoot me a message on Discord or on Twitter, and we'll get you out your shirt. Now, for this week's contest. This week's contest is to tune in to my live show, The Dark Friend Social. I do that every Monday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be giving away a t-shirt on this week's show, so make sure to tune in. As always, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you like Wheel of Time related content. I have tons and tons of lore related videos as well as covering the news on the TV show. If you like the Wheel of Time, 
there's a ton of content here for you. I think I'm over like 200 something videos now. So lots here to look for. Thank you to all of my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys make all of this possible. If you love what I do, please consider checking out the Patreon link in the description of the video and looking at some of the tiers. Thank you for your support. Also check out one of these videos right here that you might like. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.